All right, I'm back. I got some sleep. I slept on it. I'm still happy with these rankings, I'm pretty sure, but I didn't realize how long this would take. That first part took two hours, so let's go for another hour or so because there's still 28 more dungeons to rank. Starting with Siren Song C. A uh, very good dungeon. Uh, the first dungeon that introduces stack markers. The short section on the boat isn't too offensive or anything with the the high HP but boring to fight tentacle jellyfish thingies. But then it gets the dungeon gets going and is really good. Uh, the first boss, fun, introduces stack markers finally to people. Newbies run away, but that's not the game's fault that people run away the moment they see any sort of marker, even though they should never do that pretty much ever. Uh, the destroyed boat, se boat section is actually really cool as a set piece of like, hey, there's a bunch of boats all crashed together and you're traveling over them. The, b the things are falling over to give you bridges, dealing with the, the fire puddles that show up. If the tank knows what they're doing, they know exactly where to place to never be in danger of those. Second boss is like really, it really goes over the same mechanics over and over and over. It does, I guess it's not that bad, but like it, you'll go through like three full rotations of its mechanics before it dies. Where the first boss, you don't go n through nearly as much of the mechanics over and over. You'll get undertow, you'll get the put the knockback, you'll get the stacks. You'll get AOEs, etc. But it, it, it's... I like the second boss to the... Getting into position before the ground becomes almost all dead is really cool. I like being able to figure that out. Just, oh, I see where all the enemies are going. I'm going to move here. Perfect. I'm in the right position. I can max melee range them. Wonderful. And then the final boss is the first introduction of Mind Jack. And it's a... It's a really good one just because it, it has an evolution. You get the move forward, run backward, and then you have AoE puddles to avoid, and then you have even less room, and it adds in AoEs that are targeted. It, it does an evolution of the boss. And even though the mechanics do repeat a lot in that one for sure, it's, and it does an evolution. It's that thing I like where it's like, yeah, you're doing the same mechanics, but you're doing more there is an a, a natural evolution and then the actual fights and the, the the trash pot the trash mobs are fun especially like the second to last pool well i guess the third to last pool because you want to fight the two doggos and then the giant wraith solo but yeah i other than that little section it's a it's a really fun dungeon to me and also i guess the boat so i'm going to Definitely put it in A. I'm gonna put it just above Brave Locks's long stop. I don't quite like it as much as like something like the Vault, but I do like it pretty pretty well, pretty well. She Sweet of the Violet Tides is gonna be on the lower end of the A rank just because Eh, it looks pretty, but some of the trash mobs are annoying to deal with. The first boss is not too bad. It's, it's, it tries to do the evolution thing with the second time it traps one player. It will, uh, uh, summon adds and then it will do targeted AOEs at, on everyone. But it's like, eh, it's kind of boring. Second boss is neat. There's a lot going on that you have to avoid. You have to avoid Coriolis Kick, the Volcano, uh, pulsing AoEs, and then you have to also get into the boxes. I hate how even if you establish which box everyone gets before the fight, you will always get someone trying to take your box. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if that's people's fault or the fight's fault just because some of them do involve running away from the Volcano things. But you can run away from the volcano things and still get to your box just fine. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna put that more on people's, but I do slightly fault the boss for it. Uh, the giant hallway where you're getting fire two spammed, it's like a U. If you go left, there's a chest. If you go right, that's progress. And I don't like that part just because like the chest is so far out of the way for just the chest. 
and which means either the healer is going to fall behind with their healing, or a DPS is going to fall behind with killing the enemies. There is no ideal scenario there if you want to do a big pull and get the chest. It's a bad position for the chest. And the final section is really annoying with the, the exploding pufferfish. Like, they're kind of e easy to avoid, but they're really annoying with how, where they get in the way. I'm not a fan of those. And then the pools are a bunch of big enemies all stacked together, and it's hard to AoE them. But at least the second section, you can run into the little clove with the chest to stop the bomb fish from exploding. But the first one doesn't get that uh, leeway. So I'm gonna... And then the final boss is alright. The, the, the ad phase are really slow. You spent... With any decent party, not even a good party, a decent party, you can kill the bubble so fast and then spend like 20 seconds just waiting for the boss to show back up. It's really slow. The ad phases are nice, the, the, the shark ad phase is nice. Dealing with the gaze mechanic is good, good timing on those. But in general, it's kind of... It has a lot of the hallmarks of things I don't like about the Never Reap bosses of it feels like it's wasting your time. So in general, it's a dungeon I really like for the looks, the design, the pools are fun. First two bosses are pretty good. Not great, but pretty good, I would say. And then the final boss kind of... Eh, it's... I don't like the, the, the mist phase in the water, the dropsy. So I'm going to low A rank it. Actually, no, I'm going to high B rank. That's... It's right below, right above Arm Veil. And now, Bardom's Metal, the big... The, if any dungeon is a newbie killer, it's not Arm Veil, it's Bardom's Metal. Even with experience, these things hit hard. Even with perfect gear, perfect gear, it hits hard. Oh my god, they, they hurt, 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 hurt. The pulls are fun to do when you have a good party, but if you don't have, like, a top-of-your-game party that know what they're doing, if even one person doesn't know what they're doing, it can be basically impossible to big pull here. It's a bit too much on the damage. I like the dungeon, but the it gets it's a bit too, too big on the amount of damage that gets thrown out. For the for even trash mobs, uh, the first boss kind of annoying to deal with, just cause oh, if people don't realize you're supposed to the the when you get targeted with the distance marker, people don't realize that it's a distance marker and so they die. Okay, that's fine. Then they realize okay, I have to get away. Then they get away to the curl, which covers half the arena in AOE's instead of going to one spot that's like. Oh, let me run to the sheep to make the sheep do small AoEs and barely cover the arena. You should run to the sheep, not to the curls that cover the entire arena in AoEs. It's it's cool that it's that the mechanics are just based on what you do. I just don't like what people do with it, that they don't understand the boss and what it also the the crumbling crust attack, why is that so fast? Like it could have been like 0.2 seconds longer of a cast and it would have er, of a AoE showing up and it would have been much nicer feeling. It, sometimes it feels like it's impossible to dodge even if you're already moving because if you're moving if two AoEs are sit stacked next to each other and you're moving in that direction, well you're getting hit by at least one of them and it's kind of annoying. But otherwise, uh the second boss is really cool. Like yeah, it's a uh, just dodge mechanics, but like it's a it really can- I wish more bosses did that, and like, harder mechanics, cause... Oh, everyone has to be doing mechanics, here's how you do- Once you learn what you're doing, you just follow the pattern, and then you can start doing fancy stuff. But that's fun to be doing the fancy stuff, it's like, learning how to get uptime. That's- that's what that boss is like, when it comes to, once you've learned it. You know how to just get uptime with moving as little as possible to dodge the mechanics, and... That's what I like about it, and I wish there were more bosses that were like, okay, all I'm going to do is throw mechanics at you, but I'm actually going to throw some difficult mechanics at you. Get ready. And then I like I like the giant 
iron balls in the final sections. They're, they're so weirdly out of place, and it's hilarious that they're there, honestly. And then the final boss is a good challenge. I do like how it, it has all the different things. It has Feather Rain, it has Gaze, it has hard-hitting raid-wides. Just like everything else in the dungeon, it hits hard. But because it's a boss, there's only one enemy hitting hard, so it feels a lot more like a fair kind of difficulty. Uh, and the ad phase isn't completely all garbage because it's, oh, you attack a bird and then it does a dash and then you kill another bird and it does another dash. And if you know how to position it all, none of that's a problem. It's just, oh, yep, kill the boss, dodge the AoE. So it does waste your time a little bit, so I'm going to dodge like half a point there. But then the the wings of retribution that like that's following like Tiamon's path, that phase is a, like a cluster of just stuff going on but when you know okay green arrow needs to be away from everyone else everyone else go on one side to the boss green arrow on the other side get knocked back avoid the aoe's get back in it's hectic but it's a good kind of hectic i like that so i'm gonna i think as much as i like difficulty i think for a dungeon it's a bit unfair and it's, it's a lot like Stone Vigil, but even worse. So I think I'm going to keep it on the low A rank. It's still a really good dungeon, but it's it's a bit overtuned. Next we have uh, Doma Castle. Yeah, that's it. I'm even... I can read it. I can read it just like... That says Doma Castle. How do I say it? Uh... Uh, Doma Castle. Okay, uh, good dungeon. This is a really good dungeon. I don't- I haven't really been commenting on the music of dungeons, but, like, some of these dungeons have had really good music. Uh, Fractal is- that's part of why I love Fractal as much. I love the Fractal music, too. Doma Castle, Gates of the Moon, really good track. I- I love that track. It's so pumping. It's- it's- it's a really good track. The boss is a really good- the first boss- deal is the first appearance of exaflares so as a result they're not exaflares anyone who calls them exaflares is actually factually incorrect that's not the exaflare mechanic go learn what their real name is because i'm not going to tell you go figure it out for yourself but it's good i like the the exploding bits getting in the way that you have to slightly adjust for getting around those but you can be perfectly positioned to be between them and it's, it's a good melee kind of movement maybe ranged have less more annoyances with that but i like it uh all the aoe's getting shot out it's there's a lot going on with it but it's a good amount of a lot going on the middle section brings it down just because of you have the giant uh the giant enemy with like a billion hp and if you do a multi-pull it's to the two dogs and it's kind of no matter what you do, those two sets of enemies are just the worst to deal with. Just because it takes forever. And then you have the cannon area. The cannons themselves are kind of annoying. But, like, it's the set piece of that section. Of like, hey, we're going behind enemy lines. This is their defenses. We penetrated their defenses. But in terms of actually pulling them, even if you time it right, it you got very little time to react to getting through that. And it's, it's a bit meh to me. But then the boss is really good. A lot of people don't understand that towers you only need one person in. You can basically keep the boss almost center the entire time. Uh, even No matter what pattern of the knockback things you get. Melees run super far away even when they have plenty of room for melee. It's really weird how people treat that boss. It's a good boss. But people, it really shows off. How little people understand mechanics themselves. Second boss of a Doma Castle is a... If you don't understand mechanics, you're gonna... Not even just the specific mechanics. If you have trouble with mechanics in general, this is a boss that's going to really confuse you. And the final section is penetrating the Inner Sanctum. I like the, how all oh, everything's crumbling. And then you get to... The giant turret. I don't, I don't. The 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 hexadrone is kind of an annoying pull, just because again, t 
tons of HP, but also it summons two sets of two enemies at specific HP amounts, and it's like, okay, I guess. It doesn't really, not really much happens in that fight, it's just, like, it's the most, the biggest definition of just tank and spake, and in the worst possible way. But then you get, uh, once again, mechanics that people don't understand with Grenholt, or however you say his name. It's a, it's a really, I like this fight a lot too. It incorporates a lot of mechanics you've seen in the dungeon that you just did. It also incorporates a couple of new things. The, the targeted, the targeted, uh, distance marker where you have to get away from everyone, place it, and then run back in. That's cool. Hard on the uptime, but also cool for introducing all the, the spike things, the, the saw blades. Tanks not understanding you don't have to stand in the chainsaw. DPS not understanding that you have to stand in the chain gun. That he will always target you for the entire time and you can't avoid damage. It's like the opposite, opposite happens every time. Tanks can avoid the chainsaw completely. When he does chainsaw, you move out of the way. Tanks never move out of the way. Chain gun? DPS refuse to stop moving. They will run around in circles all over the place trying to dodge, but you can't dodge it. You just stand there and take the damage. So it's like, it's it's really weird how the mechanics, people do the exact opposite of what they need to do every time. Yeah, I, I think it's a good evolution of the dungeon, a good finale for the dungeon, a good finale for that guy's little character arc. As much as I would have liked to hear his voice lines more and like, Oi, Orzian, you're going to take down Garlemald. Aye. That's not a good uh, impression, but uh, definitely great music, great atmosphere. The bosses are great. Some of the trash pulls are kind of bad. Um, low S. Gonna put it below Zelfatol. Castro Mabanya, we're running out of room, so I'm just going to put it in SS for now. Castro Mabanya, pretty slow, pretty boring to look at just because it's Garlean textures and all that. All the Garlean places look the same. So it's kind of boring on the looks. The music is good. I like the music. Uh, pull sizes can be annoyingly small. First boss is neat. It can get pretty annoying if people don't understand how to use the cannons and, like, they just sit on the cannons and not fire. But that's their fault, not the game's. Uh, second boss is really neat. It used to have a lot more HP before scaling kicked in. And, uh, I like how you have to have, follow the different, uh, elements to do it right. I really like the elemental gimmick that he has. I don't like how nobody listens to the, the, what he says. I am immune to fire and ice, haha. -ha. Everyone tries to attack with fire and ice and not lightning. The final section, though, is amazing. I love, this is, earlier I talked about a dungeon that has small pools that are just, like, super fast, energetic, go, go, go. It's this section here in Castro Mabanya uh, that, that throws, like, two, ten enemies at you at once, so... It's really hectic, but it's also manageable. It's the best of both worlds if it's a small pool, but it's still a big pool that and has some of the dangers of big pulling. And I really like that about it. And then the final pool is kind of meh with the the Colossus, but it's it's all right. But then the final boss is also really good. There's it it's again an evolution fight. It does all the same mechanics, but they evolve slowly with every round. It used to be a lot longer of a fight. You used to get to like four canisters before it would die. So you miss out on some of the evolution now. But it was really cool back in the day when it was, you could see the full evolution. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a meh on the looks. Pretty decent on the music. Bosses are great. Trash mobs are kind of meh until the final one. Uh, hi B. Hi, B. Al Amigo. This dungeon's, once again, good music, great bosses, fighting, like, I... 
I can't think... This is another one where I can't think of anything outright bad to say. I really have to force it. Like, Scorpion Boss, the targeting system mechanic, and the cutting the arena in halves. That's cool. Uh, I guess the worst thing I would have to say is for the scientist, the getting your soul sucked out is kind of slow. It's a big pace breaker. It's a neat, really neat pace breaker, but it's kind of slow just because that is li that's literally the purpose is that you move slow so that you have to really focus on dodging the AoEs and all that. But also, he has the really cool voice lines, and it's hilarious. The soul rebels! I must share- I must share these findings! Ah! It, it's- It's a really character-filled moment. Uh, I guess the last two colossi before the boss is kind of an annoying pool, just because they're so huge, so the- Uh, the vents are huge, the AoEs. And it's like, they're not all that difficult, it's just annoying to deal with. It's one of those more annoying than difficult than anything. And then... Xenos himself is a really fun fight. I like... I, I, I actually love the Xenos fight. It's... It does the evolution thing. He does all the different mechanics. You have to know what each one does. Proper usage of... Good party dy dynamics is key for this fight to making it go really smooth. The ad phase is cool in that you can target two, uh, one of the swords down, LB2, the second one, and then take out the second and third one, and then you have another LB2. This is one of the few fights in the game where it's possible to get two LB2s if you know what you're doing. At worst, it's an LB2 and an LB1. Actually, yeah, I think it's actually you LB1 one of the swords... No, yeah, you kill the first sword, you'll get LB2 by that point, most likely. You'll kill the second sword, LB1, kill the second, third sword, LB2, LB2 Xenos the moment he comes back. That's neat. That's, that's a really cool little bit of thing. And also, dealing with all those mechanics in the ad phase is really good. You have to deal with Xenos' mechanics, and you, you have to deal with where the swords are. If he's doing wind, it's an AoE based on the wind. If it's the if it's the, the, the dark sword, you have to spread out ba based around the dark sword. You have to worry about the electricity around the lightning sword. It's really neat. It's a really neat fight. Um, Actually, I think that's a good position for it because I like it a lot more than I would have just originally figured because just because like I said, it's Good music. It looks great. It does have some visual evolution and the uh, uh, boss evolution. The tr the trash mobs are fun to fight. Yeah, other than the slow part in the the Mr. Chair fight. Yeah, I'm gonna put it S S S. It's a one of the top dungeons in the entire game. And now Kugana Castle. I liked this one when it originally came out, but I think I don't like it quite as much anymore. Just because first area is alright, I guess. First boss is... Even back when it first came out, you could basically ignore most of the first boss's mechanics. And it was like... I don't know, it felt undertuned even for being a level cap dungeon. And the first boss was kind of just boring, even if you did do mechanics. At least to me. Uh, second area could be really slow because of the summoning enemies. If you if your group didn't have good DPS, you had to deal with more enemies. And it was basically just like chain pulling. You had to forcibly chain pull because you'd pull one set. And then because you can't... You physically can't kill all the enemies in one of the pools, so you pull a second set of enemies before the first set dies, and it's like, chain pulling is the dumbest thing you could do in this game, and this dungeon actually forces you to do it, which is terrible. Uh, second boss is really fun, though. It has that, the dealing with the, the positioning of all the AoEs going off. That's really fun. So I can at least say the second boss is one of the highlights of the dungeon. Trash mobs kind of suck throughout the entire dungeon. 
but then also you f you finish on Yojimbo, and Yojimbo and Daigoro are a super fun fight, but also once again undertuned in that you can miss every gold piece, and I'm pretty sure he cannot kill you. I don't think you could ever wipe in that fight from his ultimate. I n I never actually got the entirety of the 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 and run where we actually missed every gold. But we got pretty close and it was like, it did like half health. And I was like, really? That's it? That's all it did? So it's funny also in a way of once you know who Yojimbo is within this game, it's funny. The, what, that, that it only does so little health. But also like, as a boss, it's kind of, oh... There was no reason for these gold collecting phases. That sucks. But the actual fighting phases of Yojimbo is really good. I like the actual active phases, the the dragon head part. Oh wow, I just realized something when I just said that. That's that's cool. But uh Yeah, when you find out do I'm not even gonna say it. There you there is a thing in the game where you find out who Yojimbo is. So, uh, go, go do, go do Hildebrand. Go do the Hildebrand quest and you'll find out who Yojimbo is. It's not just Yojimbo, there's more to it. But, uh, yeah, I just realized something and that's cool. So that actually just upped it a bit. But I'm still gonna say it's a below Aurum Vale. I like it a little bit better than the Airy just because it has some really good bosses. But overall, it's kind of sucky. Like, not sucky, but it's like average at best. So it's an upper middle B. The Temple of the Fist, meanwhile, is another one that's I really liked, but also I'm not sure on. Um, first section's alright. The goo bits are kind of annoying. First boss is interesting, but not dynamic enough with the, the adding in the second set, the second curl. It's all right. Yeah. Um, the trash pools are generally good aside from the fact that there's always stuff in the way. You have the puddles in the first section. You have the walls coming out in the second section. And in the third section you have like the puffer fish that explode when you get near them. So it's, it, I guess it makes pools more dynamic. So I guess I like that about it, but it's like the way they do it, it's a kind of meh. Just because, oh, you just run around the puddle. Oh, wow, that was so difficult to avoid. The first boss is all right. Second boss is really cool in that you get a rating. And so anytime you got a bad party, the, the dungeon this is one of the few times the games would call out that you have a bad party. Oh, that was a below average performance. Good job. But then when you had a good party, it was like, oh, you had a really good performance. And it's like, oh, wow, cool. This is actually a better run than I thought it was. And it gives you, a, like, a bit of energy. Like, yeah, we're doing good. Let's go tear this last section up. And then the final boss has some neat mechanics. And, like, oh, the boss will always target the... The, I, I forget if it's the closest person or the furthest away person with the tornado. So it's one of the few times where you could have like the healer stand super far away to bait the tornado. And it would be a good thing. And then they'd run back in after they bait the tornado. Then there's the collecting the orbs bit which is like, oh collect a ton of orbs and you get super powered. And it's like... This, it's weirdly satisfying of collecting all these shiny orbs and then you're gonna do a big burst of damage to finish off the boss. And it's like uh, the stack markers, the rows of destruction. It, it does, the boss does a lot. It has a lot of different mechanics that all do different things. So I really appreciate that. Some of the other stuff brings it down. Like I said, the trash mobs are kind of meh. Uh... The first boss isn't amazing. It's not up to par with the second and third boss. The second boss does like with the, the symbols like the, the Gubal hard boss does. But the arena is better formatted I'd say for that. And the boss's mechanics are better formatted for that. 
It's a small arena, so it's easy to deal with. So I'm going to put it in the S tier. Um, above Domer, I'd say. Above Zelfatol. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm going to say below Lost City Hard just because that's a really good dungeon. Actually, no. Think about it because of the... I'm going to put it down there just because of the bad trash mobs and the first boss being me. But I'm going to say it's an S overall. The Lost City... The Sunken City of Scala. Uh, some very high highs, some very low lows. The first part is... If you want a big pool, you could go huge! And even the small pools are interesting there. If you do small, they can still be interesting pools. Uh, the boss... I remember back in the day where... They accidentally reversed the... The, the pushback and the knock, the pushback and the suck in. They had reverse names, so... The overtow would suck you in instead of push you back. That was funny. Properly placing the puddles is also an interesting dynamic. Uh, but then that's all he does. He has a tank buster with torpedo, but he doesn't really do all that much. Second section um, is a bit annoying just because of how big the mud guys are. I don't like how big they are. They could have been a little bit smaller. Makes big pulling annoying when you even can big pull. I don't know. I I don't like how big they are. Big enemies need to. Be, it needs to be just like one at all. Period. That's it. One big enemy, and then that's it for the pool. But this throws in a bunch of them, so it makes big pulling difficult in a way that's not fun. But big, the the small pools aren't even interesting either, just because the enemies themselves don't do anything interesting. Uh, the second boss is neat. Turning into the Spriggan is a bit finicky just because the bomb timings, they take a second or two to explode. So it can make time learning the timing for everything hard. But it's interesting for a mechanic. You could also see a fat cat sometimes in the fight. Uh, doesn't do much otherwise than the Spriggan phase. Final section is just dumb with the turning into the ghost and the, the segmenting. The final pool is really cool with how you can big pool, but like the 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 segmenting here just just feels weird, just because the the ghosts are so slow to move, and you can accidentally run out of time and fall in the pit. And oh well, guess I have to reset that. Uh, and then but the final boss is really fun though. It does a lot. It's another boss that does a lot. It does move in, move out. Targeted donuts gaze mechanics. It does a lot of mechanics. That's so I really like that boss So I'm gonna I'm gonna bump it down to a uh, Do I want it there? Yeah, I'd say it's No, I'd say it's right below total rack. I'd got to put it below total rack at eh, still below anti-tower Above Somar Hard. No, actually, thinking about it, that's. I should go way down. Da, 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 da. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna put it down there. I don't know why I was putting it so high at first, just because thinking it's, it's mixed bag, some good bosses, some annoying boss, or some dumb bosses. Yeah, that, that's good. Hell's Lid, meanwhile, is. Once again, a mixed bag. Uh, pools are kind of... The trash mob's kind of boring at points. The weird lava cube where you have to deal with four demon wolves is... Why is that even there? I mean, I guess it's interesting as a set piece. But as a fight, it's kind of annoying. Especially as a tank, because you have to run around the entire room grabbing them all. You have to run from one corner to the other just to grab them. And it's really easy to lose aggro there. Uh, first boss, though, is fun. I like its mechanics. The, the dealing with the positioning of the dropped weapons and dealing with the guy chasing after a party member. 
Uh, then there's the second boss, the wind thing. I think that's a good use of the downtime just because there's enough ads that you'll mostly get through the full downtime without having to just wait there doing nothing. And then it does the dashes so you have to get into good positions while also killing the enemies. It does a lot of, uh... Uh, the AoEs, the line AoEs are good, I'd say. The path up to it is also pretty good. Some good fights in there, even if you pull small, pull big, pull small, good fights in there. Final section, uh, looks really cool. The fight, the going through the lava area looks cool. Middle area looks kind of bland, but it's an evolution. But then the temple area looks really nice. And has the different sets of enemies, and I like... I actually do like the two lines at the end. That's, that's a, like, the two fi different parts of a, chim a chimera. So that's a cool way of doing high HP enemies with not much going on in... Take one enemy and split it up into two different ones, and you have to react to that. That's cool. I like that. And then Genbu himself is a really interesting fight. I don't like how long when he's like, Aha, I've put up a shield. You're going to wait like 10 seconds before I actually let you start damaging the shield. Like, that's strangely slow, but otherwise is fine. Uh, so yeah, good dungeon. High A? High A or low S? Let's put it there for now. Do I like it more than the vault, though? First section's kind of bland to me, other than looks... Dungeon music is... I can't remember what the track of this dungeon is. Uh, I'm gonna put it high a below vault. But above Beosol's wall... No, below Beosol's. Put it above Gubal hard, but... No, no, no. Gubal hard, I'm gonna put above health lid. Once it's getting down to like little like okay these these three are like super good dungeons, and then there's a wide gulf between that and Brave Locks Hard. I like Brave Locks Hard, but it's not like that amazing. Uh, and now we get into my favorite dungeons, Hard Mode. Some interesting pulls in the first section. Um, the 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 tower boss is interesting. I, sometimes I feel like it doesn't do enough. It's an interesting fight. But I'm not sure it does enough. Does it do enough? I'm not sure. Okay, so I just cut ahead because I had to check something. For some reason, I was thinking my favorite boss, like the coolest boss in here was actually a different dungeon. I thought it was the the burn, one of the burn bosses, which just goes to show up. It's been a long time since I've done this dungeon, but I remember liking the boss. The first boss is kind of meh. The second boss, the Ultima Warrior using the Warring Triad mechanics. I forgot that is here. I thought it was the burn for some reason. And I just, I was like, what is the second boss of this dungeon? It's the Ultima Warrior and Ultima Warrior is super cool. I need to go do this dungeon again because it's been a long time. But using the mechanics of the Warring Triad is neat. It's doing what other bosses have done with using other bosses' mechanics, but using the Triad. And it makes sense given it's the Fractal Continuum. And it's, hey, this is where all the Alligan stuff was and where all the, the primals were hidden near the, the Ark. And so the, I, it's a really cool fight. Very dynamic, all the different things it can do. Pretty hard as well. I think it's pretty hard fight. The mother bit, the t the tower, uh, nobody knows it's called the mother bit, but the tower is, hello car, the tower is boring, but then the ultimate warrior is amazing. And then th you get into the main area of the dungeon, the new specialized looking area. The first area looks cool just because it's the final area of the original dungeon, but all destroyed. And then you get into the uh, the second area and the inside and it's got a different gloom, a different lighting level. You get to the Ultima Warrior fight and it's a really cool fight. And then you get into the final area and you're in the depths of the entire area. And it's like, oh my god, look how look at this big area. Look at all 
how everything changed. Look at all these glassed off areas with enemies behind them, all the test test subjects. It's thematically cool and it has some cool uh looks. It uh it's hard to explain this one, and I, I like the music again. Fractal Continuum nails it both times. I think I prefer the original's mix of the Fractal theme. This one is still cool, but it, it loses something in the remix. And then the the Behemoth at the end, that one's cool. I, I don't like how it's like how long the Ecliptic Media cast is, the, the final, hey, this is the enrage phase. Kill me before I enrage and kill you. That takes a lot of his HP bar. But also, I guess that's also to make it super stretch. Of like, oh my god, we have so much HP left. And it's casting its final mechanic. I feel like they ran out of ideas when designing this fight. So they just, you're an ecliptic media, but make it super long. And make it like 20% of its HP bar. So stuff like that. It's like, I, I rate it less then Fractal Continuum Original, because it has the Mother Bits kind of boring, but then the other two bosses are really good. But then the Behemoth ends on a sour note. It looks cool still. So I'm gonna, I'm going to high S. I'm gonna put it right below Amdapoi Keep Hard. Just because it, it's a good dungeon. But it, it has a couple of faults here and there. And then we get the Swallow's Compass. The four rooms are neat thematically, but gameplay-wise, it's a lot. It's a bit... I mean, I guess they had to make it that big to fit the boss arena in the middle. It's neat that you loop around. That's neat. Uh, the, the individual fights themselves, yeah, they're single pools, but they're each interesting in their own way. They do try to make them different. Uh, the first boss is kind of... You ignore basically everything. Almost. Oh no, there's little flames in the middle. Okay, just stand max melee range and you don't even worry about the small flames. Move the boss slightly when they turn big to dodge all the explosions. And then you move back to the middle and or you don't even move after that because then the, the, the boss will be dead by then. Uh, second area, cool pools, small or big. The knockbacks into the wall, that's a cool mechanic of having to slowly progress while being knocked back by the water waves. And then you reach the end and you can stop the water waves when you kill the enemy. Uh, the giant Shikigami, water Shikigami, is interesting. Uh, I like how it the, the different mechanics force you to spread out well, but also not too far so as to not get, be getting buffs. Uh, the in the middle, the punch in the middle, that makes you start sinking. But you can use that area still to dodge AoEs. And as a Dragoon, that area is super good for me to dodge AoEs because I could just elusive jump through it. Uh, final section is really cool looking, what, looking at all the, the mountains and the open air. The underwater section, I don't look around enough in to really notice like, Oh man, we're in underwater tubes, that's neat. I really should go back and just look around that dungeon one of these days because it it does have some really nice l views in there once you get out of the first section. Uh, and then you, the, yeah, the final section's cool. The music's great as well. I really like the, the track of this dungeon. And then uh, we fight Goku, except he's not Goku. Would be cool if we fought Goku. That'd be hilarious. But we fight Sun Wukong. Is a good fight. You it another again another evolution. Uh, if I am, he does both ends and a donut and an actual get away from him, and then he does the ad phase, which is really weird. Of like, hey, he has like a billion enemies you have to take out, and it's like, it's kind of weird with how it works. Just like, hey, here's a billion enemies you have to take out. It's like, oh, okay, thanks for having us genocide this entire species. And then he splits in two and you have to kill them both at the same time. And it, they could do both they could both do both ends and you have to pay attention to what the tell is for each both ends to know which one you have to go to. And then he also does the, the spear throw with the, the tethers at people and you have to aim them separately. That's neat. That's a neat way of doing two separate the one boss is two and having to kill them at the same time. So it's a 
first areas, first sections kind of bland. Even the first boss is bland, but I think... I think I'm actually gonna leave it there. Because it's similar to Temple of the Fist in that way, in that it has some good, it has some bad. But overall, it's a pretty good dungeon. I think I like, like it a little bit more than Temple of the Fist, but not quite as much as Doma Castle. Yeah, that's a good spot for it. And now we can move on to the burn. This one is where I thought the Ultima Warrior was in. What is the first boss of this dungeon? I can't, because you go through... Is it outside you have to fight something? There's another one where it's super forgettable. It's super forgettable. Like, it's so forgettable, I gave it another dungeon's super cool, unique boss that I love. That's how forgettable the first boss was. Um... Hold on, let me look it up. Cutting. Oh, yeah! Yeah, it's the, it's the scorpion where you have to hide behind things. It's like that Zadnor enemy. It's the Zadnor enemy. Because Zadnor did it better. Oh, yeah, okay, the scorpion. That is, that is so forgettable, I forgot that it's in a dungeon. Wow, okay, yeah, that's... And also, the fr it's cool that there's a sandstorm, and that's making rocks fall. I like that idea. It is kind of hard to actually see. It's actually hard to see in all the sandstorm. That's kind of the point, I guess. And then you get inside into the scorpion fight, which is super forgettable. Then you go into the underground tunnels, fight a bunch of koblins and all that. That's an alright pool. And then you get to the weird race car boss fight. I'm in two minds about this one just because the race car sections have a lot of waiting of, okay, which is the safe spot? Okay, that's the one, run over there, and then you're safe. But also, it's like hilarious that this is a boss. I, get it, I laugh every time I fight it. I forget that the scorpion happens, but I never forget that this boss exists just because we're drag racing and that's hilarious. We have to dodge drag racing. It does have also some targeted AoEs that you have to place and all that, but like... The drag racing alone makes it unforgettable for me. And then also after that fight, you finally get back out into the bird outside, the storm's gone, and then you get... The amazing framing when you first walk out, just when you first walk outside into the burn again, just stop and look around and it's like, holy crap, look at all of this. The cutscene at the very beginning where you're flying overhead doesn't really paint the picture well enough, but then you get out there, it's like, outside, it's like, oh my god, this is amazing looking. Even though it's all one color, look at all the different texture that you can see, all the different things that are bro all the dead and around it's it's a really good for good framing piece the actual fights it's a it's a huge area though and the actual fights here are kind of bland big poor no it's kind of bland to fight but then you get mist dragon and it's a cool fight it's a hard fight it also sometimes feels unfair with the oh it turned into mist but it isn't fully turned into mist, but the mist is already activated, and now you're gonna take damage and get frozen out of nowhere. It's a bit of a noob trap kind of thing of like, oh, you have to stop really early to not get frozen. And then also that's coincidentally the same time the ad phase begins. So you have people frozen, you have to break them out to go start killing the ads. It's a, it's hard, but with how you can get frozen, it's hard in a bad way. But everything else about it is hard in a good way. A good DPS check in there. The the star AoEs are a neat implementation. I like. Uh, the when he turns in the arena into mist and you can't see him and you have to find where he's gonna dive bomb. That one's a bit too tight of a timing. The arena's kind of big, so if you're not immediately on top of it, the moment it starts, uh. Moment it starts charging the AoE, if you don't find him immediately, you're going to get hit or avoid it by pure luck. It's kind of too fast in that aspect. So, and unless I got your teammates communicate for one sec, hey, he's right here. Stand in line. 
I'm standing inside his AoE. Don't be around here. And oh, okay, that's where he is. I'll stay away from there. And then they move out and dodge. And okay, that's great. But if people don't communicate, that's a bit too tight of a timing. So I'm going to say this is probably the weakest dungeon of all of Stormblood. It's still, I would say, better than basically most everything else that we've seen, like, below Sestasha. So it's definitely still above average. Like I said, it's probably the weakest of all the dungeons, but I'm still going to say it's below the airy, below Holotali, but above Snowcloak. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that position. I'm good with that positioning. Uh, and then we have Arboretum Hard, which is better than normal Arboretum in basically every single way. Where did I put? Oh, yeah, I put Ar normal Arboretum, low B rank. At worst, Hard Arboretum is low A rank. You got some really interesting pools. I really like the Choo Choo enemy. I, I always call them Choo Choo's. That's Zelda, but the Choo Choo boss, the first boss, does some neat things with the the targeted AoEs, the poisons, going, running, jumping on the plants, stack markers. It does a lot of things that I like. The pools are fun up to there. It can be really big pools. The big enemies aren't too big and get in the way of doing big pools. That's, that's a perfect size for being big enemies. Uh, second area, the... The big guys turning everyone into the little, the little water sprite guys, the, oh, what are they called? The Popkiri, the Popkiris? What are they called? The, 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 the Diakas turning everything into those. That's a neat little mechanic. And if you get hit by that AoE, everyone that gets hit by that AoE turns into one until the debuff runs out. I like that mechanic, even if it is like, oh, I just barely got clipped by it. So now I can't do anything. That's, that's neat. I think it's funny and cute. It's really cute. The second boss also is uh, hard in good ways. It brings in uh, earth shakers. It has the shifting floors. It has the tiered explosion earth attacks. Has some pretty decent, for a level cap dungeon, decent hitting AoEs. It's, it's good in... It's a really good boss. It, and then there's... The final boss as well is a bit annoying if you don't, but right before the boss say, I will handle all the slime puddles. Don't attack the ads. I will handle it by myself. You need that to n not make the entire fight a complete mess. And it's one of the other fights where it's like everyone does have to actually spread out for AoEs instead of like everyone crowd around the boss and that's fine. No, you have to actually spread out to not cover all the safety platforms in in goo in mud so it's like it's i don't like the last boss i i really don't it's annoying it's all right at best but it's eh. also the section up to the final boss is also kind of annoying with the watering the enemies if the if people don't understand as a tank you basically cannot do it you have to have someone else do it you will be interrupted if you try to hit the, the switch so you need someone else to do it and you can try hey hit the switch hit the switch hit the switch hit the switch ah hit the switch and then nobody hits the switch and then the enemies take forever to kill because they're covered in mud and the mud gives them a defense boost and that's kind of really annoying so the final section takes it down, but the first and second sections are all really, really, really good. So it's it's a definitely a high A. I think it's similar to Swallow's Compass, and so I'm going to put it there. Uh, do I like it more than Doma? No, I'm going to say I like... Actually, maybe I do. Let me think. Hold on. Let me think. I think I can safely say I like it more than Swallow's Compass... Do I like it more than Doma? I don't like it... Do I like it more than Zelfatol? That's going to be an easier... Because do I like it more than Zelfatol?
Um, more than Doma Castle, less than Zelfatol. That's that's how I'm gonna put it. And then finally, the finale for Stormblood, the Gimlet Dark. Gimlet Dark is dark. I do like how the different areas you go through some trenches, you go through through uh go through an airship graveyard, and then you go through actual battlefields. So there's an evolution even if it is all dark and gray. I like that there's enemies parachuting in. That's really neat touch. First boss is good. I like the introduction of the spinning marker. I'm really glad that they introduced that into dungeons, even though te technically uh, uh, V12S did that first. But I'm glad they introduced it into dungeons so that people can see it in dungeon content and not just in Savage Raids. Um, second boss is weird downtime, but also you ha it, put it pushes you into positions that are not favorable to you and then uses that against you, so I like that. And it does some neat AoEs. Final boss is I really like. The bomb patterns can get kind of rough, but once you know what you're doing, once you've seen it once, it's like, oh, there's some super obvious safe spots in there that I didn't notice. That's cool. Maybe if I was slightly better, I would have noticed them. And then you start doing them. It's like, oh, man, this is cool. Uh, I don't really have anything bad to say other than it's dark. It's super dark. The, the pools are fun. Uh, the evolution of the different... Things you go through in the dungeon is cool. The different bosses are cool. The worst I can say is the the weird enrage phase for the final boss is what is the point of that? I mean, I guess I needed a finale for that fight. It does have an evolution at least, so there is an evolution with AoEs and all that, so it's not completely pointless. So it's a really good dungeon overall. I'm going to say it's not quite Temple of the Fist level. I'm going to put it over the vault, though. I really like Gimlet Dark. But visuals take it down. Music. Do I, do I remember the music? Is that the theme? The, the Stormblood remix. But, uh... With the horns, I think. Yeah, I think that's it. So it's yeah, high A, very high A. Very, very high A. And that that's the rankings for now. Also, we got Never Reap down here still. No need to worry about that. Never Reap's Never Reap. Who cares about that? So yeah, once again, I said Stormblood, basically every dungeon was going to be above Sestasha, which remember is right here. Eh, there we go. So it's like we got very few dungeons below Sestasha in ranking. And this, it's getting crowded up here and the, these are good dungeons. And going into the Shadowbringers dungeons, it's not going to get any less cramped.